Hi, I'm Mike McLean. Welcome to the Short Circuit Podcast, brought to you by Swift Aircraft. In this series, we'll be chatting with a variety of people from all walks of life, but who all have one thing in common, aviation. We'll discuss how and why they got into aviation, what or who inspired them, and what they would say to encourage young people to get involved. Flight fascinates many of us, and our guests will explain why they are compelled to look to the sky. Today's discussion is a little unusual, and a first for the Short Circuit podcast. We actually have two guests. However, you'll only hear from one of them due to their unique relationship. For those of you who know Ted Coningsby, then you'll understand immediately. For those of you who don't, then you'll figure it out as we go along. So, without further delay, allow me to introduce Nikos. He will explain more as we progress. So let's listen into the chat. Good morning, Nikos, and welcome to The Short Circuit. And let's see, you have a special guest with you today, and that is, of course, squadron leader Ted Coningsby. Good morning. How are you, Mike? I'm I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. It's um it's a pleasure to meet you both, and I'm going to leap straight in with question number one, and that is who are you, or in this case, who are both of you, and what is your involvement around aviation? Okay, well, um, I think I'll start off with the boss. Uh, this is Squadron Leader Ted Coningsby, and uh, he's the main star and influencer on our uh, YouTube channel, which fo- focuses only on military aviation. We like to promote the Royal Air Force and our UK um, NATO allies, the United States Air Forces uh, that are here based, and of course, our other allied um forces that come here on air shows and deployments as well um my name is nikos can't forget me but it's always all about it's all about ted Mm -hmm. um who uh who lives uh, 29 in coningsby but of course he's here today for your uh for your show so uh we're looking forward to that and our our main thing is to literally just um either make videos or stream live um uh, all sorts of um, military areas such as um the actual bases themselves we go to low flying areas and we go to um, air weapons ranges as well, where we're allowed to uh, safely view any activities, carrying out any live firing and things like that. But when we go to bases, it's not all about the fighter jets. We go to RAF Valley. We go to RAF Cranwell in a in a in a grob. And people think that you know, to someone that might not be exciting. But these pilots, two things: one, they could be our future frontline uh they could be our next red arrows pilot but their goal is to become a pilot and then therefore to become frontline so we need to promote that mm-hmm. uh, excellent okay um so I'm, i must admit so i caught up with you oh i think you'd only just started sort of live streaming on on youtube so maybe 18 months back or something like that my, my first thought when I, I was just skipping through youtube channels uh anything to do with aviation and i saw i saw this guy waving a, t- a teddy bear around and i thought what is this what is going on <laughs> and there was this constant stream it was more of a a stream of consciousness that was coming out and this teddy bear was chatting away and this guy was talking and the, all these planes flying around and there was just a whole buzz of enthusiasm i thought this is either madness or a stroke of genius and then <laughs> it, it's i mean your, your your channel's just grown exponentially since then i mean it's it's been I've, I've watched the progress and you now have i don't know how many subscribers you have now but uh it's jumped from very very few to a significant number but nearly thirty-two thousand subscribers on youtube wow i mean that's in in a short space of time, that is something significant, you know. That's uh, so oh, congrat- yeah. congratulations on that. Um, so thank you. If, be- before we get into the, your your channel a bit more, I mean, how what got you in, involved in aviation? Is is has have you always been interested in aircraft, or is this a, a new thing, or what what got you started? Oh, um, it's uh, so. Born in Western Supermare, home of the Western Air Festival. I think growing up there as a child, we always had the Western Air Festival. Mm-hmm. And I've always been interested 
in air shows when you're a kid it's you know the, and, and one thing you know as a kid as soon as you hear red arrows you, you know you, you start buzzing you want to see the red arrows i mean that name is, is a childhood name that you just you grow up with and you get excited about but with you know as you grow older and things you kind of you know you, you get older you, <laughs> you start moving you you know you buy houses and you know you set you settle down or etc everyone's got different lifestyles you get a job and you kind of lose track of it and um it, it was Ted that gave me that inspiration to to just to just get involved. And that that didn't happen overnight. That was absolutely by chance. Right. Um, the whole story. I, do, I don't know if you know the story, how, you know, I didn't just come up with an idea to say, I'm going to have a YouTube channel with aviation and have a teddy bear, um, which no one does, by the way, which is great because it's unique. And why the teddy bear as well, we get asked that. But it it took a, it took many decades. Uh, for me to, because uh, two years ago, um, or two and a half years ago, I had no idea what a typhoon was. I thought the tornado was still with the Royal Air Force, which wow. is not. I didn't know what Coningsby was. And everything I talk about on the on our streams, I, I knew nothing about a few years ago. And I've learned as I've gone, uh, learn as you go is the concept. But the story behind Ted was, was really, um, <laughs> thanks to COVID in a way, because mm -hmm. it's uh, it's amazing how one uh, a pandemic came out with this because i wanted to cheer the world up and i think that's kind of like the the, the back the background between the, the for the channel and aviation and why i've got into it um i knew uh, so i mean i um i, I was doing photography and I, and I got to learn oh there's a place called coningsby and there was typhoons there so i was like what is a typhoon so i, so I thought it was a pretty little uh, triangle plane i thought oh it looks like a mirage that's the first thing that came. i did I had no idea mm -hmm. so i got to know that there are the bases the you know there are the, these pilots they don't just come out of nowhere and just suddenly start flying but the story behind ted uh, was covid we had lockdown and um and all sorts of rules came out now at the time my job was a wedding photographer and uh, uh, we were allowed to go to a place of work at the time and weddings were restricted. But before that came, I wanted, there's a bridge near, near where I live and I wanted to cheer the world up. So one night, anonymously, I decided to fill a, an entire bridge where I, near where I live with teddy bears. Oh, right. But where I accumulated hundreds of teddy bears was um, with support of my partner and her child and a few other people were at my places of work. They were donating teddy bears. In the bags and bags of teddy bears was this guy, mm -hmm. and I, when I unraveled all the bears, I, I, I was it was in the paper by the way, it was anonymous. I did it secretly, and it put a lot of smiles on people's faces. But the teddy bear uh, Ted came out, and I was thinking, oh, I like this bear. I like I like this guy. There's something about him. So I put him in my car, filled the bridge up with teddy bears. Um, a few days later, um, I was going to work at Woodhall Spa, which is just before Coningsby. So the bridge is done. The world's happy. Uh, I'm going along to Coningsby to go to Woodhall Spa at a wedding venue and the lights come on flashing that there's aircraft coming in so I thought oh typhoons are coming in now I still had Ted in the car so I put him in my car and I thought oh there's a lay by here why don't I just park up and do a little funny video with the typhoon and Ted so I got Ted and recorded the typhoon landing with Ted in there put it on Facebook everyone loved it thought it was completely different then I just then then I learned that there's a, a typhoon display pilot practicing. I was like, oh, what's what's all this about? So again, people with their amazing cameras and video cameras, you know, getting amazing footage. But no, me, no iPhone and Ted just enjoying this whole practice display. Now the typhoon must have been a dot. Anyway, getting to the point, I uploaded that to Facebook. Mm -hmm. The display pilot Sainty seen it messaged me straight away and said when can ted get his medical by i thought it was a wind up I thought, mm. and yet you know one thing led to another he took ted up on the very first flight of the display jet blackjack because he absolutely loved what i did wow. and and that is how i got into aviation so it was like a chain of events right that, so and then he took ted up on the maiden flight of blackjack now, the, as a YouTube channel, I wanted to put that on my YouTube channel. It wasn't quite established as, you know, uh, it wasn't, it, it was just, a, it was just, I was just using an iPhone making funny videos like Ted watches the Lancaster, Ted watches the, the Red Arrows or something like that. Mm -hmm. But obviously it, I started to get, I, I started to get by kit slowly, slowly. And, and that, and then I got to, you know, I was saying runway numbers wrong and people were helping me out. And then I got to learn a bit more and I made a lot of content. <laughs> 
Excellent. Oh, that that's that's a that, that's a story. I mean, uh, COVID has a an awful lot to, to answer for in changing people's lives, and in some cases for the better. So uh, that sounds like um, yeah, you got to write the book, haven't you? At some point, that was wonderful, wonderful. All right. So um, so that's how you got into what you're doing. I mean, it, to get from from a standing start during a pandemic up to where you are, um, that must be something. So you must be getting quite a lot of feedback from uh, your viewers. And so you'll, you'll have subscribers and members of your channel. Do you get any pushback from other people? Because uh, I know there's a lot of people out there who are quite finicky about aviation and they, they, they might maybe be a bit stuffy. Um, so how, how, how has your channel been received in general, would you say? Um, well, so our our viewers um, are, are are mixed of all ages, mm -hmm. all backgrounds. Um, these two people, uh, pilots that watch the channel, mm -hmm. we get ex forces that watch, the channel and all field uh, and all sectors. So, Royal Navy, Army, they all watch it, and we get every day. We get emails, letters, um, cards, gifts, everything generally the channel has received amazingly because we get so many uh, parents that say thanks to your channel our child has joined the cadets thanks to your child um um our child wants to be a pilot our, our child wants to be uh working in air traffic control right. so yeah you're gonna get we call them and then the other side of things we call them the one percent because there will be you can't please everyone sadly mm, that's true that's true so, some people uh, just don't get got a teddy bear some people just don't get it at yeah. all but. Yeah, I, 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 I must admit, it's uh, when I first saw it, I thought, really? But then I watched it, and I stayed watching it, and I thought, well, I'm still watching it, so it must be working somehow. So it, it's, it then it becomes a thing, you know. It's like okay, it becomes perfectly normal. So um, no, that, that's great. I'm interested in what you said there that you're getting feedback and saying that so your kid, you know, you got some viewers who's, who've now got children that are joining the the air cadets and so on. So are you interacting directly with the the cadets at all? Are you are you doing any meetings or presentations to them? Oh, right. Be honest i think that's a great idea and i would like to I, it's more that i hear from them that, and um i i i know that our videos are shown at the cadets as well and are shown at the air cadets um just to um give a bit of education on some of the things that i say and i to identify aircraft mm -hmm. um so yeah that 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 is something i would like to do get more in, um involved in that but um just just to also um to let you know that it's even ex uh, ex servicemen are actually wanting to rejoin thanks to my channel as well. Wow. I've given them that boost back, I know, and that's a true story. Yeah, no, uh, I, I, I believe it. I, I mean, within within Swift Aircraft, we've got a, a high focus on STEM and STEAM activities. Uh, so we engage with the cadets and we engage with schools and, and colleges and so on. Um, and it, it just strikes me that um, using uh, Ted uh, would be a very or engaging also using Ted engaging Ted uh, as a as a vehicle to engage with uh, youngsters would be uh, a very effective way of getting the message across because I don't know if if you like me but I've, I've found that, that we've got a whole generation that knows virtually nothing about aviation unless they live near an airport or an airbase mm. um they, they don't get engaged and they don't realize that there's potentially uh, jobs and careers to be to, to be had in aviation and trying to catch their imagination is, is something difficult and I think you have a, a very effective vehicle to to get to catch the imagination of youngsters and get them out yeah there, so. definitely yeah yeah, yeah but, but I never thought about it that way you know that the bear is going to inspire um, I didn't, you know, like I said, I didn't realize how, what, how, where this was going to go. I had no idea um, at all. It just, it literally, the channel just took off. Sorry <laughs> for the pun, but yeah, it took off. And, um, but yeah. Um, and then the, you know, even Ted's beret, although he's a squadron leader, again, I don't know if you know, but we do have other characters as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People say, why hasn't Ted got an officer's cap badge? Um, and um, my response is, it's quite simple. And it's the way we influence things that not everyone's a pilot. And Ted 
represents all of the trade in the Royal Air Force. They're one unit, so Ted will never have an officer's cap badge. We That is like the, the set start to give you that first step and inspire the next generation of crew and pilots. Well, that, that you, what you say there is very important because this is a message that we've been, especially on, on the short circuit, we've been really pushing out is that it's not just about being a pilot. It's not just about being uh, an engineer. You know, you, you've got ground crew, Drew. I think he's he's around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. if... <laughs> I can't remember who, who your your regiment. Oh, Reggie, yeah, Reggie. So you've got Reggie in the regiment, you know. And, and yeah. so even just within the air force, you have a wide range of career opportunities for people, which you know some of them never even get inside an aircraft, but you know they're mm -hmm. still working alongside and a part of the the whole air force thing. And I think this is for us. That's an important message to get across to to youngsters. That is that. Even if you're not interested in flying itself, but you're interested in aircraft, then there's something that you could do, whether it's air traffic control, as you mentioned earlier. Um, That's right. So there's an awful lot. There's an awful lot that can be done. And I think uh, what impresses me is that the characters that you you have uh, are catching people's imagination. I think it, it will, you know, it'll work its way down. So it's going to, you know, probably parents finding it first of all, but then the kids will catch on. So, uh, so, mm -hmm. and, and and I see that you also you get around all over the country. I mean, you were up in Lossiemouth recently, which is uh, that's not next yeah. to, Conning, uh, to to Coningsby, really, is it? it it's no, quite a way. no, it's uh, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is quite a long way, but uh, it's really important that we do. You know, exp you know, um, sh show them off, shall I say? You know, yeah. is is one way. Show, 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 show our Royal Air Force. You know, where where you where, where you can go and what they do. It's um, it's it, which is why to to know you got to go. Mm -hmm. So why why did you choose to focus on uh, the military rather than a combination of military and civil? Um, good question. Um, I think it's the I think it's more of the ex uh, the excitement. I'm going to go with that because it, I think it is exciting. I, I actually say this on the channel. Can you imagine Ted at Gatwick or Heathrow? It just wouldn't suit him <laughs> um, in, in, in a more comical way. But I, cho I, I chose military because um, because every day I, I walk and like everyone else and I look at the sky and th this is the main thing. I look at the sky and I think there are men and women right now protecting that UK airspace. And I just think that people don't know this like you and i right now so we, you know we were talking about a totally different shop there's men and women right now 24 hours a day 365 days a year protecting that airspace so i would like to show my gratitude and also promote our future crew to do the same role and i thought that is a really exciting thing to do and again which is why i will go to crown well it's not fighter jets but this is an important step and it's really good. And I, I'm sure these pilots will think, well, oh, no one's ever going to get a photo of me or something. Perhaps. I don't know. But wouldn't that be exciting as a, someone focusing on their mind to be frontline combat ready and think, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I'm in a grob tutor and someone's streaming me. That's got to be exciting. Surely the Ted Coningsby channel is streaming me in a grob. That's <laughs> that's the way that's my thinking. But I chose aircraft because it's exciting and I'm very passionate about what they do. Mm -hmm. OK. Oh, it's in interesting you talk about uh, Cranwell and the and the grob and stuff. I mean, hopefully within a, a few years down the line, maybe we might be looking at uh, streaming of uh, pilots trading in a Swift. But uh, that's that's another. Story. Yeah, that's right. When is is it twenty twenty four? The first flight is it? Um, that's what's projected. We will get something in the air then. Uh, we've got a we've got a few hoops to jump through because um, we're looking not only at. Uh, conventional piston engines but uh we're looking to decarbonize the, the raf have got a commitment to decarbonizing uh so we'll be looking at uh uh alternative power sources so we're looking at battery power um with we, we know there are limitations on the existing technology um there's hydrogen which has been around for a long long time mm -hmm. uh but is being shall we say rehabilitated um so that's that's a, another option and there is uh, some exciting new development uh, on battery power coming very soon, which uh, we can't announce wow. right at the moment. But uh, shall we say it should be sure. a, a significant step forward over what we have at the moment. And if that 
works out then we're looking at usable battery power for useful missions in light aircraft um so if we if we manage to pull that trick off then uh We'll definitely be uh, you'll be seeing us around an awful lot more. And on on that point, um, yeah. once we do get something uh, ready to for flight, then I'll be in touch with you and Ted again. And that'll uh, be open. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get you down to to Coningsby. Uh, sorry, to Coltishall, uh, Coltishall, uh, where we're based, and um, you, you can have a look around, and we'll get Ted up. Uh, it'd be an ambition of mine to get. Ted up at, at least in one of the test flights. So uh, if he's been in a tie for that, he's uh, oh, he's fainted. Oh, he's knocked himself out. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we'll definitely we'll definitely need to get him up in, in a swift. So uh, we'll we'll get something organised for that fairly soon, I think. Um, but yeah, so you yeah, got so, so you you got a Cramwell. Uh, you're looking at the the basically the absolute beginners, and then over to Valley where you get the the Texans and the that's right. uh, and the Hawks. Um, so you're getting around the country. I, I must admit the the uh, the show you that you did from the Mac Loop that was something else. With your you had the surprise of the Harvard coming through there. That was a that was a nice day. Yeah, that was. No, I don't think anyone was expecting that to be honest, because I don't think anyone was ready for that one. No. So we, we're we're throwing names of aircraft around and stuff. I mean, if you went back five years, would you be able to hold this conversation? Did was a, aviation or military aviation was it in in your head at that point? You know, with aircraft types and runway numbers and all that, or no. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, I, it's all because of this teddy bear that that got me here. Right, that's exactly the truth. You are right. Five years ago, I wouldn't. I, I, I didn't even know. I didn't even know the existence of a, a typhoon. Um, yeah, it's it's as simple as that. Yeah, good, good, it's a good good way of thinking. Five years ago, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't have had this concept. Wow. Okay. Okay. And I take it it's it surprised you. You surprised yourself. Yeah, I mean, um, that I'm able to stand yeah and just talk about runway numbers and how they're created and how they can change. It's, <laughs> I, didn't never, I surprised myself sometimes. And so, with your 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 your, your social circle, your sort of family and and friends and all the rest, of, how how have they reacted to this? How, has has it changed relationships? And uh, you know, what, what's the reaction been within within your group? They, I mean, I've always been someone that once I set my mind on a subject like the photography, I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll always be 100 percent on it. If I take on, um, you know, before Ted came along, I was, um, yes, I was doing the, the photography, but I was doing waterfalls of Britain. So I was going around Britain focusing on. So once once I set a subject again, that that was that was a funny one. That was before Ted um, going around Britain um, photographing waterfalls mm -hmm. and um you know, they, they would never see me for a long time. So, but this way, with the live streaming, they can see me at the same time and still socialise. So the live stream is, is a bit of a godsend in that respect. So although I'm not physically there, I'm, I'm there in front of the screens and they can interact. So they, they are on board with that. Excellent, excellent. So your life's taken quite a turn. Um, it, it seems to be occupying all your, all your time. So you're doing this basically full time now. As um... Yes, Right. Okay. Um, have you got any plans for going overseas and and filming at bases overseas? Or are you going to stick in the UK? I would like to. Yeah, I would love to go overseas. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, there's talks of um, RAF Akrotiri. Again, I'll need to contact the base to find out what the rules and things mm. are. Uh, red flag as well in the US. Mm. Um, is it? Um, Swiss slow flying through the Alps is it Axe Alp I think it's called um X Alp where they do low flying and it that's quite that's that that appeals to me a lot to do yeah. the the low flying there so yeah we I am thinking about it but um not even realizing this was such going to be such a jump and and explode into what it is right now so it's a, it, sometimes it's a lot to take in but I can plan ahead which is a good thing yeah excellent Okay, so we 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 actually we're ticking through time fairly quickly here. So what I'm going to do now, we're we're down to what the big question of the day, and that is, yeah. Okay, so and I'm going to ask you for yours and Ted's 
for what are your favourite planes and why? Okay, uh, so a te- we'll start with te- Ted's favourite plane is is got to be the uh, Typhoon because that was the first plane he ever flew in. So Ted will always uh, have a have a connection with with the Typhoon as it was his his first aircraft. Right. Um, myself, it would have to be the Tornado for All me. Right. Okay. Um, I know it's not flying. Yeah, it's not flying with the Royal Air Force. Um, but when I do get to see it with the others, um, why? I, I, just as a kid, I started drawing it a lot, and I fell in love with it. Mm. Okay, and yeah. so you were React earlier this year. So did you get to see the the German Typhoons flying? Yeah, uh, yeah, the, I, yeah. It was amazing. They're quite impressive aircraft. I mean, they're bigger than you think. Um, it's. it's uh, I think it goes with most. Uh, military aircraft, you see models of them, you see them zooming around the sky and they don't look that big until they get on the ground and then you're right up next to it and it's like, uh, yeah, it's, that's a big chunk of metal hooning yeah, around the place. Yeah, she could still move they, that was beautiful Yeah, yeah. So, so the Typhoon for you, uh, sorry, the Typhoon for Ted and yeah. specif- specifically Blackjack would he... Uh, yeah, it's Ted's jet, it's his very first flight that he ever had in that and he was in the maiden flight that would be why right okay well that makes sense and uh the tornado for you so any, any particular model or just the, the 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 fighter version or the bomber version or oh i really like the gr4 <laughs> right okay um but i um to be honest as a kid i didn't mind whichever as long as it had the name tornado i didn't mind every <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. or gr4 just loved it Excellent. Okay. So we'll get, um, so what we're doing is we're putting all the pictures on our, our virtual control tower um, down at uh, Swift HQ. Uh, so we'll be adding, and I can tell you that the, nobody's chosen the Typhoon or the Tornado previously. Um, so those pictures, okay. will be, they're unique to you, you you guys at the moment. So that sounds good. Um, <laughs> we, we, we won't ask, we won't ask Red Ted about his because we we know what he's like. <laughs> he's just trouble. Oh uh, well, Grand Crew Drews, Grand Crew Drews is the Phantom. Really? Now, see, Grand, Grand Crew Drew has just gone up in my estimation because there's a <laughs> the, coming coming away with the Phantom. That um, yes, he, he is a man who shows <laughs> class and style there. So we'll go with that one. Well, <laughs> he says that he was riding his BMX when he was a nipper, and he, he saw a Phantom go past and. Uh, he was inspired. I, I can understand. But he wanted that. to fix it. Ah, well, <laughs> there, there was, I think there was a lot of fixing required, actually, but we won't go into that story in a moment. Well, Nikos, it's been absolute delight talking to you two guys. Thanks for joining me here on the Short Circuit. That's great. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much. Okay, ciao. Bye. And there you have it. This was certainly one of the more unusual conversations I've had. It's impossible not to get swept up in the whole Ted thing. It's infectious enough watching his channel, but conducting the interview was even more intense. I genuinely think that the opportunity for engagement between Ted and our youngsters is an open goal. Nikos has a unique selling point for his streaming channel. With almost 40,000 subscribers, direct engagement from the RAF, regular shows and social events, Nikos seems to have tapped right into the fans of military aviation. Although his is an unusual approach, I think you'll agree that the enthusiasm for and love of aviation shines through and brightens up many people's days. So, ladies, gents and teddy bears, I say thanks to Nikos, Ted, Reggie and the rest of the TC squadron for an entertaining chat here on the Short Circuit. Fly safe. You have been listening to The Short Circuit, presented by Mike McLean and sponsored by Swift Aircraft with the hashtag InspiringAviation. This has been a Zoom Spike production.